I have been using Wi-Fi around my house for a long time and while I have a nice wireless router it always bugs me that my PlayStation, that my computer are actually not wired into the network. Yet I don't have Cat5 in every room and I haven't had the willingness to break through walls to make sure I string it. So I decided to give this a try, Motorola's mock adapters. The idea is you can pipe Ethernet through your cable infrastructure. Most modern networks actually have a data channel. Most modern coaxial networks have a data channel which runs this mock standard and these adapters promise to be able to bridge essentially IP traffic through it. My first thought was to use just one adapter and connect it to my existing X1 router. Technically the router has a little note on the back that says it may support Mocha. I connected the adapter and looking on the back of the router, I'm not sure if this Mocha thing is supposed to light up or not to indicate that it's working. So let's see what the adapter looks like. So here's the adapter and don't mind the wiring, it's still in temporary state. As you can see I have a LAN link light and I have another link light which I imagine is the Mocha link light and they're blinking together. It's looking like the adapter has found a partner on the network. Now I know very little about Mocha so um, I'm just expecting that a link light would be all you need and generally these adapters are fully unmanaged. You just plug and play. But unfortunately what we're seeing is timeout after timeout. We don't seem to be able to get any packets through. Well, I have to say, I didn't anticipate something like this would happen. So, why buy one adapter when you can buy two? Here's the second adapter and what I'm going to do is connect it to the X1 box. And the connection is pretty simple. Essentially, I'm going to disconnect the X1 from the main hub, I should say, and connect uh, the Motorola Mocha adapter in its place. And then I will connect this cable, which is now disconnected, over to the device um, plug on the Mocha adapter. So, uh, let's see if that makes it any better. And what do you know? Happiness ensues. We have a link light, we have a LAN, and we have power. Now what do we have here? The white cable comes from the X1 box, so this guy goes actually goes to the X1 box, I should say. And as I mentioned, that is now plugged into the device hole. Then the port marked network actually goes into the hub. And then we also have an Ethernet cable, which goes over into my little Netgear switch back here. So all these things together now. So what are we doing? We're getting, um, we're acting as a pass through for all the data going to the router. We are also taking the data from the Ethernet switch and injecting it into the network path as well. And hopefully when I go back to the other room, there shall be data packets flowing through. And first we're gonna fix this wiring a little bit, right? Okay, so fix may have been too strong a word, but at least it looks semi-orderly and I can see those lights when I need to when there's no glare. Anyway, let's take a look on the far side and see if the proof is in the pudding. Okay, we're seeing merry blinky lights. This is always a good sign. So now, let's see what our computer has to say about it. So let's ping our default gateway. Oops, yeah, you may want to see what I'm typing. And so, Focus. All right. Oh, snap. Packets. Now let's see if we have internet. And we're going to ping our old favorite Cisco.com. After all, they made the X1 box. So, all right. And voila. All right, guys, we have internet and packet drops. Internet and packet drops. Now we're going to find out if those were caused by our setup or 
Cisco is throttling us. Which shall it be? So, we went to ping another IP address. And what do you know? Same kind of packet drops, same periodicity. Something is fishy. Okay, so we tighten some cables, and next thing you know, things are flying. And here is P test. We're clocking a very respectable 180 megabits per second. I'm obviously overpaying for internet. But let me tell you, I, I could not clock that with my Wi-Fi. 50, 60, sure. But, um, and yeah, upload is, upload is okay. Now, I don't know if that's limitation of the mocker or just my internet, and I think it's my internet. So I'm gonna run some better tests in a little bit here with my servers, but in the meantime, this looks pretty good. Okay, so we're looking at about 160 megabits per second transfer right now using SCP. Now, I think we may also be maxing one of our cores out. So I'm not entirely sure I can believe these numbers. Maybe we're going faster than it looks. So let me try to use another transfer protocol. So finally, we're doing a fully unencrypted test. This is just using Netcat to stream across the network. And we're looking at about 175 megabits per second. Now, the advertising on the box says these things can go up to 1.2 gigabits. Well, obviously not. But you know what, 160 megabits, it should be okay for me. You know, that's probably more than I can reliably get through my Wi-Fi. So is this technology miraculous? No. Even though I have fairly modern, you know, circuit 2000 wiring in the house and the wiring was done well, it's thick, expensive cables. Uh, we're not getting exactly miraculous throughput here. Um, I was expecting, honestly, at least 500 megabits per second. But, um, you know, approaching 200 is not terrible. So I'll call this qualified success. Well, holy smokes, could I have been wrong? So, if you notice, in this next test, we have a little option called minus U. Minus U says UDP. Don't bother with a TCP stack. And now, my dear friends, we're looking at speeds of uh, right around a gigabit. So, yes, victory. This is pretty amazing. Okay, expectations exceeded. Two thumbs up, mocha for the win. All right, well, I hope this was as educational for you as it was for me.